So I kind of wanted to make mention of honing because I don't think a lot of people quite do the right thing with it. So honestly, the only time you can hone a bore is if first your cylinders look relatively good and um, when you measure them out, they're close to uh, whatever bore you're sh shooting for. So say that this here is a standard bore and um, they, it has to be within spec so I'd be able to run standard pistons with standard rings in it again or else it would never seal up right and it'd pass oil pretty quickly. So what you first need to do is use your measuring tools here in a mic and figure out what your actual overbore is. So the worst on this engine that I found was um, it was about three over, not 30 over, just three over. And that was about the worst that I found. Now you see here that your, um, your clearance here for your piston clearance can uh, only be so much over. So there is a tolerance. So with these standard pistons, they, um, they all come out to still be um, within the four inch bore across they don't show anywhere so what I could honestly do is then hone this motor out and um, re-ring these pistons and obviously new bearings and all that and reinstall these and it w it'll run just fine so as far as that goes what you also need to consider is your uh, not your ring gap but your ring up and down play so that needs to be um, within two to four if you can get a if you can get your number six feeler gauge in then it's too much so at least on the Fords here so if I can slip this feeler gauge in which I can't then it would be too much or I couldn't use these pistons again because they show too much wear in the ring slots but so far, they're good. There's no wrist pin play up and down. If I were to hold it down and lift up and down, I can't feel any play in there. So hypothetically, those should go in just fine. And you always want to, uh, if you can see this here, it says three. I got my pistons all scribed, so they all go back into where they're supposed to go because it's all, it's from the factory, it's a balanced rotating assembly. So you want to put it back together the way it was so it all stays properly balanced. So anyway, with honing, if you can hone, which in most cases you end up having to bore. So I don't like to hone. And if it's going to be in a good car that I really care about, if it's not just some beater vehicle, then usually I go ahead and bore it out. I'd never even mess around with honing. But to hone, what you want to do is you want to go up and down at a pretty good pace. First you want to lube up the cylinder wall so you don't load up your hone here with all the metal and it stops doing its job. So you want to load, get it good and around, score it on your fingers here and get in there and get it all around real good. And then you want to go at a relatively quick pace but you want to go up and down relatively quickly. You don't want to sit and go straight in one spot because what will happen is you'll get um, straight hatching and that's really hard on your rings so you want to get a good up and down motion to it with relatively decent speed and then you get a result of some of this good cross hatching here and um, you really want to be careful because your hone are about 30 bucks they're kind of brittle you don't want to go down in here and smack into the uh, the crank journals here because that will just bust up the end of your hone so you want to go nice and easy but you don't want to come too far out and have it fly out and you don't want to go too deep so you got to kind of find the right area and you can't go past obviously on the top here you can't go past the pivots or else it'll fly out so anywho that's kind of the idea and you want to go a little bit at a time with your hone so and you're not really honing it you're more deglazing the cylinder wall so your rings can reseat you know if you have to hone it then obviously you might as well bore it if it's that bad. So if you have any lip at all that's real dramatic, honing isn't going to fix it. But you want to go up and down 
at an even pace to make sure that you get all up and down the cylinder wall evenly. Um, so that's generally the idea. And like I said, a little bit at a time, I go up and down about 30 times and I stop and wipe it off and take a peek and I'll probably do it again another 30 times. And at that point, it gets to looking pretty good, but when I check it with my tools, I'm not any farther overboard than I was to start with. So that's kind of my opinion on honing. And when you start, see if I can not trip over my shoelaces here and kind of give an idea. Now I don't have this oiled up, so I'm not going to necessarily do it, but you get into the bore here and then you go up and down and that's all it takes. So, anywho, and when you slow down, you don't want to slow, once you stop, you don't, once you let your finger off the trigger, you don't want to hold it in one spot. Make sure you keep going up and down until it stops and then grab onto your, your, um, your little arms there that hold your discs on and pull them out. So, that's about what you're after. And then you get a cylinder or cylinder walls that you can use again. So especially if you're going to reuse your pistons, you need to check all your tolerances and your clearances and make sure everything is within spec before you even think about reinstalling those. And then your bore has to be within clearance to your pistons or you cannot reuse your pistons again. So it's just something to think about before you make all the effort to do things incorrectly. And then after you do this, you want to go in with like soapy water or something of that nature to get this, all this crap, all this home garbage out of here. If you don't plan to boil it, I usually boil my blocks. So if I were to do this and reassemble this motor, I would boil it after I've honed it here. And then I would, uh, and then I'd go ahead and reassemble. So you want to keep that in mind. So anyway, there you have it.